the cars that crash, five of them contain vinyl chloride. It's a monomer used to make PVC. Some of the reporting on this has gotten vinyl chloride confused with polyvinyl chloride, the polymer made out of vinyl chloride. Now the reason that this distinction is really important is vinyl chloride is very hazardous and very flammable. Polyvinyl chloride is a plastic that's used in like everything. The other thing about vinyl chloride is that it boils at 8 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's shipped in its liquid form. Meaning that when these trains crashed and these started leaking, they weren't just leaking liquid, but they were spewing boiling gas. So vinyl chloride is really toxic. OSHA has the permissible limit of how much you can be exposed to it during an eight hour shift as a one ppm part per million, average over eight hours. So prior to this, the biggest spill of this chemical was in New Jersey where one train car and about 23,000 gallons of vinyl chloride were spilled, but it didn't catch on fire. Now this crash in Ohio has five train cars. These kinds of tanker cars can carry between 25 and 33,000 gallons. Let's call it 250 to 250,000 pounds of vinyl chloride. That's per train car, five train cars. There's maybe a million pounds of this toxic chemical spilling into the ground and also boiling off into the air. But then it caught on fire. I think this is where the reporting is really bad because no one is mentioning what the byproduct of vinyl chloride burning is. Of the many byproducts of burning vinyl chloride, one of them is hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is really unstable and latches onto water, like just water vapor in the atmosphere, and that turns into hydrochloric acid. And that turns into hydrochloric acid. So right now, government officials, officials from the railroad, both the governor of Pennsylvania and Ohio are calling burning off the million pounds of this stuff a success but not mentioning that it means that we have hundreds of thousands of pounds of acid in the air, potentially. Now, ever since engineering school, I've studied a lot of industrial accidents. I just find it really fascinating, and organizations like the Chemical Safety Board, NTSB, and OSHA all have like really good reports available to the public. I think as a designer, it's really good to learn about mistakes. When looking at these kinds of industrial disasters across time, there are a couple things that are pretty universal across all of them. One, the responsible party in this case, Norfolk Southern Railway, always plays down the reality of the situation. Politicians also just repeat the same lines, and then news outlets just repeat the same. So all we're hearing is the responsible party's word. 